Hello, everybody. Um, well, um, I, after all these speeches and uh, panels, when, we, uh, when you are already furnished with uh, quite a lot of uh, data and uh, digits, I want to give a rather uh, different view. I would give you uh, entrepreneur sentiment on the uh, changes taking place in our market. Well, for uh, some of you who bought their tickets here, I'm sure uh, Uzbekistan is still new location. Uh, well, and uh, but it wasn't always like that, because uh, Uzbekistan was on the map and uh, putting in the words of uh, American scholar Frederick Starr, Uzbekistan was a center of globalization in the Middle Ages, and uh, it was on a crossroads of um, east and west, uh, north and south of uh, Middle Age world, and it was uh, uh, straight in the center of Silk Road, and uh, that freedom, that flow of uh, goods, cultures, and knowledges uh, was assuring uh, uh, this uh, like those places uh, to be real uh, economic, scientific, and cultural centers of the world. Uh, but it didn't, unfortunately, last until our days because uh, I think that elites gone greedy. They started conflicts, and uh, this route became dangerous to the extent that. Vasco da Gama had to go all the way, you know, there wasn't Suez Canal, so it had to go all the way across the world, around Africa, to reach uh, China and India. So, and then, um, you know, and then, you know, the history, uh, then there was uh, uh, Soviet times, and uh, Soviet times were not also remarkably good for uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, actually, entrepreneurship, as is, was uh, criminalized. And, uh, but nevertheless, I think that those DNAs of uh, Middle Ages have persisted. And uh, actually, with my grandfather, we used to go to uh, open markets. And uh, even in Soviet times, open markets were full of produce, fresh, etc. And then we, we were like buying, and it, it like, you know, it was good there, and uh, people maybe risking, uh, like, maybe their freedom, they were still trading there, and it was like, you know, it, 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 it persisted there. Uh, then, after Soviet times, um, I, I remember, like, you know, I started my business those years, and uh, Uzbekistan yet again became a center of regional trade, and uh, uh, we were then started our business, and we had the customers from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, it was again like, you know, free trade, um, uh, currency conversion. But then in 96, uh, there was imposed, end of 96, I remember it very well, uh, uh, the currency restrictions were imposed. And uh, then uh, I would say, again, we, we had this slowdown. And uh, yet again, uh, three years ago, we came uh, to new era and the reforms in the business, uh, which we rightly uh, put together with the name of our uh, uh, president, uh, Mirziyayev. And uh, this new era have uh, brought uh, following uh, liberties and opportunities to business and economy. Uh, it was said a lot about currency liberalization, but for someone who worked in those restricted areas, it wasn't only that currency wasn't available. Because the, there was so much restriction on the currency and the, on uh, foreign trade and others, you know, we had the multiple currency rates. It, it, I, I think it was really, really, really tough times. But again, I would go back to uh, Uzbekistan peoples. Um, uh, entrepreneurship uh, DNA uh, that uh, business have survived and uh, in this new era when th these liberties started to come we have a trade liberalization because the, uh, a lot of uh, duties has been reduced or demolished and then uh, also there was um, 
Like, you know, we don't need a license to trade like it was before. A lot of permissions were lifted off. Uh, tax reforms, uh, I would also give um, entrepreneur perspective to, to, it was really a revolutionary tax reform because um, it, like 94% of uh, enterprise in Uzbekistan were paying turnover tax before, you know? And turnover tax was actually, is a tax when um, your product, every time it changed hand, it was taxed, let, let's say, at 5%. So, you know, the, generally, nobody would like long chains, you know? So the value creation was suffering. Uh, now it is uh, VAT tax introduced. The labor tax, I would say, employment tax has been reduced dramatically. Effectively, we were paying, uh, like, you know, to pay someone, let's say, uh, one million sum, it would cost us approximately two million sum as an employ employer. So, uh, I mean, to, for employee to get cash, one million sum in their hand. So, um, and, um, well, um, now, also, one thing which uh, for business is good that uh, somehow, you know, in uh, previous years, we managed to very much close and control our borders with uh, our neighbors and uh, I would say with the neighboring country, uh, the relationship of Uzbekistan was rather tense. Uh, now, um, you know, I would say like it is real like, uh, uh, regional, like Shangri-La, where, like, you know, we are all happy and the borders are uh, 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 free and uh, really uh, with the neighboring countries, trade is really growing up. And, um, and it is not only to regional uh, level, it is on international level as well. It was, as what it was mentioned, 86 countries and their cit uh, citizens of 86 countries can travel to Uzbekistan visa-free. And, uh, um, other countries can obtain their visa uh, electronically. Like uh, it was a time when uh, to invite, uh, let's say, foreign expert or uh, our partners from abroad, it was taking like a lot of <laughs> lengthy procedures, and uh, to employ someone from abroad was even more tough. And uh, when you have a lack of expertise in the country all these restrictions also were hurting entrepreneurship hard, but now um, it was lifted. Then I would say, you know, if you look at uh, any success story of the countries with their uh, economic growth and reforms, a very important part of these reforms is that behind that success and growth, there is always its uh, Walmart, uh, <laughs> sorry, Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, and, and Walmart too, okay. <laughs> so. And uh, so uh, banking reform and uh, um, newly opened development of uh, money markets, um, um, uh, share, uh, uh, share markets and uh, obligations market. And this is happening both uh, locally and internationally. Uh, uh, it was mentioned that uh, Uzbekistan placed uh, its sovereign law, uh, sovereign um, uh, instruments uh, last year for, uh, uh, th this year for a billion dollars. And just recently, a few days ago, here in London, uh, uh, Promstroy Bank, uh, Uzbek Bank, uh, have also placed its uh, um, instruments for 300 million. And uh, also for us as entrepreneurs, you know, uh, the involvement of the government and the government assets in economy, as we've seen um, from previous uh, uh, presentations, is huge. And I think that privatization also is giving a very good opportunity for uh, private entrepreneurs to step up and uh, actively get engaged in, the, um, in this pro privatization process. Well, and uh, it is not only those reforms. I think the whole philosophy has changed. I can tell, like, again, referring to uh, decades ago, um, uh, the government seemed like always knew what is the best for people, etc. But now we can see that uh, government agencies, government officials are actively getting engaged in a discussion of reforms uh, processes and the measures with the 
private business entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, here, I, I, like there are a lot of my friends who were taking part in, um, I would say, in discussion of some of those reforms I mentioned and, and others I don't have time to mention. Thank you. Yeah, questions maybe. Any questions from the audience? Good afternoon. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. My name is Javlon and I work at Jaguar Land Rover UK. I've got one question for you. Uh, three, four years ago, I was speaking to some professional people in Uzbekistan. Uh, they were business people. And one thing they told me was, uh, at that time, unless a business idea, a startup, had um, a predicted growth profit of 20-30% per year, then it wasn't worth getting into it in Uzbekistan. Um, typically in the UK, 5 to 10% return on investment is considered quite a good result, so it's worthwhile exploring the business idea. But in Uzbekistan, they said to me, unless your business idea generates 20, 30, 40, 50% profit, then it's not worth pursuing, it's not seen as a business. Would you say it's still the case now with these reforms in place? Well, um, answering your question first, I would say, uh, why do you think um, that returns, expected returns uh, were so high? Because of a uh, level of the risk of business. You know, like someone who would risk his money to do business in Uzbekistan, say four or five years ago, uh, wouldn't settle on three to five percent. <laughs> but uh, right now, I think the still uh, cost of money is high, and um, uh, there is still maybe some risk persist, but it is uh, not the nature of risks uh, which were prevailing then. Uh, now it is more about inflation, which uh, our uh, presenters mentioned earlier. You know, you, uh, with the, let's say 15% inflation, you cannot expect uh, your returns be much lower than that. So um, I think that the uh, figures, uh, I mean, it's not 50 or 30, like, you know, figures have dropped uh, uh, down since then, but still uh, um, they remain, I think, um, on the higher side, and uh, I hope that when uh, government uh, will tackle the current high rates of inflation, uh, we will uh, settle on a much more acceptable levels of returns. Thank you. Thank you, Zafarke. Uh, Lola Khanjabarva, Datamaran, uh, non-financial risk management platform. Uh, my question is quite brief. Uh, I wanted to ask why do you think, in your opinion, was there is such a huge social media outcry regarding the tax reform uh, and why there were so many prominent business people in the country who were opposed of the tax reform and still are? Thank yeah, you. Uh, uh, this uh, question, uh, you know, you, 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 uh, if you follow social media, uh, you should know that I was very, very active advocate of this tax reform uh, because I knew that um, the old um, system was uh, really hurting economy, really hurting growth. Uh, companies like us couldn't grow because, uh, it, you know, like uh, the previous tax system was actually punishing uh, growth and uh, depressing it. So, well, and uh, I'll tell you, um, a lot of entrepreneurs at the time who were opposing this reform, they were rather uh, focused on uh, an quite narrowly just on their business, and also uh, paying turnover tax uh, seemed uh, very simple for a lot of, and they've already adopted this model into their, uh, like this system into their business model. So, you know, like we all people, we don't love to change, you know, uh, sometimes changes are hard but necessary. So, um, and I believe that uh, it, now I see a lot of uh, people who come and say, oh, well, we didn't know, we thought it's just like 
uh, we're getting like 20% VAT instead of five turnover, and they were like not really um, differentiating that. But uh, now more on more businesses, and like figures will tell for themselves, uh, uh, job market created more than 600,000 uh, new jobs um, since uh, beginning of the year and commencing this tax uh, reform. Um, there were, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, over 30,000 companies moved to this new uh, tax uh, system model. And, uh, and plus, I think that was a really, really great uh, push and great, I would say, kick to these uh, reforms uh, when um, uh, President have reduced VAT rate from 20 to 15 percent uh, beginning of October. Uh, well, as I say, like, you know, sometimes people like simplicity, simple, they put simple above right. You know, that was the reason uh, why I think that most of people opposed. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, Sardor from Bloomberg. I would like to ask um, a question regarding trade liberalization. There's been a lot of talks regarding t trade liberalization and decreasing um, VAT and uh, taxes for uh, profits. As a local producer and key player in retail market, what's your stand and opinion on returning import taxes? And this question applies to the Ministry of Finance as well. Um, um, we talk about trade liberalization and trading with partners and neighbors, but we step uh, forward once and step twice backwards with the trade uh, imports being reintroduced from to 2020 uh, from New Year. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I mean, on the step counts, I would disagree with you. Uh, we, we rather did uh, two, two or more steps ahead and then uh, now making one step back. But uh, because if you look at the rates which were uh, then uh, and compare it with the rates being introduced now on the import duties, I mean, the, uh, obviously, it, uh, like it is better than two years ago, even when these import duties will be introduced. Uh, well, uh, like my personal position, I, I, I really a uh, big advocate of uh, open economy, so uh, that's my position, but then I, again, having said that, you know, we, we like, you know, entrepreneurs or just people, we don't have a full picture and full uh, specter of um, information, which I hope uh, was analyzed uh, before taking this, this step by government. So, Farika, I have a question for you. Uh, I wanted to compare the, the trajectory of your growth, uh, Karzinka, Datus, and a similar business in Belarus, uh, which is called Eurotorque. Uh, they, they established, a group of uh, Belarusian entrepreneurs established their, their business uh, about uh, the same time as you in mid-90s, during those sort of uh, Wild West uh, period after the break of the Soviet Union. And uh, they, uh, even though Belarus is not known to be a very developed uh, market economy, but that business grew over the, the last 25 years, from a single store in Minsk to, to six, uh, about 600 stores now across 150 cities and towns in Belarus. You, two weeks ago, t told at the Capital Markets Conference that uh, it took you from a single store in Tashkent in 1996. In 20 years, you got to 20 plus stores. and the last three years, you doubled that. And the recent EBRD investment that uh, I would like to congratulate you with, the $40 million equity investment, which is obviously a very landmark deal for private equity in Uzbekistan, uh, envision in the next five years that that money would be funded, will be funding expansion of your business across the Uzbekistan and going to 140 stores. So my question to you, when do you envision your business going to 500 plus stores and uh, do you have any, any strategic plans for, for that kind of expansion? Because the Belarusian with their 9 million people population have shown that it's possible. Yeah, um, you know, you, I, w I wouldn't really make this much parallel. You, you've seen in my, um, uh, in my presentation, I think the Belarusian um, chain doesn't have uh, 
such a qualified and uh, expert competition like Uzbek markets and bazaars. And uh, so, um, and this was one thing. And the other thing, which was, as I said, uh, uh, previous, like 20, first 20 years of our existence, there was, uh, of course, um, some factors depressing our growth. However, um, I think today, uh, Uzbekistan can easily take 500 stores. Uh, I think that uh, this uh, service, this business undersupplied. Uh, I recently mentioned that um, welcoming uh, Carrefour's decision to come to Uzbekistan, that uh, uh, like, you know, we have a big market to grow in and uh, uh, to turn it into a modern trade. Thank you.